Hey friends, Miss Christian here and welcome to Storytime Art. Thank you for joining us and I'm going to just give you a little rundown of what this class is. If you need um, any extra time, I just want you to look in the corner of the screen and you'll see a little pause button. You can press that anytime you need to and if you are ready to come back, you just press play and you can start right where you left off. So don't worry if I go too fast or you don't have the supplies, you can just go press the button that pauses it, go get it, come back, and you haven't missed anything, okay? This is a really cool book. It's got these little cutouts. You can see through the honeycomb shape. Um, and what is that? It's got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So that is called a hexagon, hex meaning six. So we're going to peek through the little honeycomb hexagon. Dawn is breaking on a brand new day and in the meadow poppies sway. A bee appears striped black and gold. A wonder of nature is about to unfold. You can see the little bee in there. In the treetops, birds start to sing. The little bee beats her wings. As she travels here and there, a gentle humming fills the air. Back and forth, to and fro, B knows exactly where to go. Where is she going? That's right, she's visiting all of these beautiful flowers. Visiting flowers of every hue, she has a special job to do. And hue's one of our words, isn't it? Gathering nectar as she goes from every foxglove, every rose. Dusty with pollen, the little bee buzzes, buzzes busily. Look, she's got a little pollen. And this is the scene that we're going to make in our art project today. B travels on from bloom to bloom, drawn in by their sweet perfume, harvesting flowers one by one. Her compass is the midday sun. Her compass, what does that mean? It means that that's what she uses to see where to go. It guides her. Compass shows us what direction we're going. So she's using the sun to show her which direction. Among the orchards, apple trees, blossoms quiver in the breeze. Carrying pollen from place to place, bee always leaves a tiny trace. Tiny trace, that means she leaves just a little bit of a path. Flowers as far as the eye can see, too many flowers for just one bee. All of a sudden, bee is gone. She has a message to pass on. What's her message? Ooh, that's beautiful. I love all these. Back at the hive, B spreads the news. There's work to be done, done, no time to lose. Can you see her still? Listen for their gentle humming. The word is out, 
the bees are coming. So she's come back to the hive and she's told them, I have all these flowers, you've got to come. And did you know that bees do a little dance? And the little dance that they do is the instructions for the other bees. That's how they talk. It's pretty cool. Look it up. Buzzing over the dense hedge grows, past the pond where wild thyme flows. Through the orchard's sweet smelling scent, the bees travel on with calm intent. That means, intent, it means like um, they are trying to be very calm. They're not hurrying. They know exactly where they're going. As lilies glow orange in the sun, the bees must finish what they've begun, stopping at every flower they find, leaving the gift of pollen behind. So they are going from flower to flower, right? And every one they go, they take a little pollen and they spread it to the next one, right? Call that pollinating. And that's how the flowers grow more flowers. The bees pass over a woodland stream, droplets sparkle and pebbles gleam. Water trickles, bubbles and weaves, a weeping willow trails its leaves. As the bees fly on through buds and burbs, a tiny miracle occurs. So many plants and flowers you see were given life by one small bee. Bees are hard workers, aren't they? Ooh, beautiful. And we love the job that the bees do, don't we? Because they pollinate all the flowers. Do you know what else besides flowers that smell great? Do you know what else has flowers? Fruit. That's right. Our fruit and some of our vegetables have flowers and they really need the bees to pollinate them to grow. So that's why the bees job is so, so important for everyone. Hey friends, Miss Christian here, and your art word for today is contrast. Contrast simply means in art when two things are very opposite looking or feeling. So in your picture, if you have an area that's very dark and a picture that's very light, those are contrasting. If you have um, warm colors and cool colors, those are contrasting. If you have something that is very shiny and bright and something that is dull, those are contrasting. They are opposites. So when you do your picture today, I want you to think of how you can use contrasting colors to really get your uh, viewer's eye to where you want it to go. Uh, artist uses contrast to really get the person looking at their art to focus where they want. They also use contrast to show um, different things so that the background and the picture don't blend in together. Hey friends, it's Miss Christian here and it's time for your art word of the day. Your word today is contrast. Contrast is the opposite. So right a second ago, it was quiet and now it is loud. So those two sounds contrast each other. We
Good morning, kiddos. Welcome to your journal prompt for week two. Last week, we talked about what we saw outside of our window, what flowers we saw, what color they were, what greenery, what was growing, and we looked really close with our artist's eye to see any details we could catch, right? I hope you saw a lot of details that you've never noticed before. This week, we're gonna go outside and we're going to look now for what plants the bees are pollinating. We read a book about a bee, or the, a little bee, but about bees in general, and how they go from flower to flower, and they pollinate things. Um, and that's carry all that little pollen from one plant to the other so that they can grow a new flower. I want you to take your journal and go outside, and I want you to take note of what time of day it is. Is it early in the morning when you see the bees before the sun is super bright and hot? Or is it after? the sun comes out and has a chance to really heat up and it's super hot out. When do you see the bees buzzing? I want you to stay back and let them do their thing. The bees are working. They're busy bees, right? So we don't want to get too close to them. We can just observe. We can just watch. All right. I can't wait to see your journals. Hey kiddos, and welcome to the first step of our project. We are going to make the body of our bee from our book. So if you have an art kit, you already have a piece of cardboard. Uh, sorry, I've already been arting, I'm a little dirty, but if you know me, this is exactly how I always look. <laughs> so if you bought an art kit, you already have a, an oval that is cut with some notches in it that is going to be your bee body if you did not get an art kit then you're going to get a piece of cardboard um, not too big just enough for a bee body and we are going to cut one out okay so this does not need to be perfect just cut a little rounded shape however you want oh these scissors are hard to cut with these little kiddo scissors kind of dull which means they're not very sharp i need to get some Big kid scissors. Okay, so that works for me. I've got a nice little shape here. And I'm going to just cut some notches. They don't need to be very deep, just a little bit, okay? This is where our yarn is going to, I've got some yarn here. This is where our yarn is going to slide in there and stay, okay? I'm gonna do, let's do five. One, two, three, four, five. And these are going to be the stripes for our bee. And I'm just going to try. They don't have to. I'm going to go about the same. Three, four, five. Ooh, and those are not the same, but that's okay, right? So there we go. Now, if you've got an art kit, you have different pieces of um, black yarn. But you know what? You can do it however you like. I'm going to use this blue because this is what I had. I'm going to get it a little longer. I've got blue and I've got pink. And you know what? Just for fun, I am going to change them up. I'm going to go blue and pink. I put black in the kit because I didn't want anyone fussing at me that I didn't give them the right B colors. So, um, this is what I'm going to use in a little bit to wrap like that. Okay? But we're going to wait and we're going to do painting first. Okay? So, we've got our little... Um, oval shape cut we've got our notches and if you don't yet just go ahead and press pause and I will be right here when you get back okay all right friends we are ready for step two and that is to paint our bee I'm sorry I noticed my table looks a little brown don't worry I didn't spill my coffee everywhere although I've been known to do that this is actually from a soil painting we did we painted with some coffee so I've still got it stained on there when you do a lot of art at home just pick the same tablecloth cover to use over and over that way if you want to do something you can pull out really quick cover the table and go to town right you don't have to worry about cleaning off the table every time um so this is my it's just an old cloth uh, shower curtain you could use a sheet you could use a dollar store 
um, plastic cloth, it doesn't matter. Just whatever your mom and dad say you are allowed to use, okay? So we're gonna take our B, we're gonna paint them all yellow. This is your project. You can paint this B whatever color you want. You could make him or her purple and pink and blue and red. It doesn't matter, you do whatever you want. I am just going to paint it like our book. I'm gonna paint it yellow for now, okay? So that's one side. Now I could wait until this dries and I could flip it over and do the other side. Okay, now one side's painted, I can either wait until this dries and then paint the other side or I could just hold it because I am impatient and paint the other side, which is what I'm going to do. My box has a little bit of extra color. I don't mind that it's showing through. You might, you might need more than one coat of paint. You do whatever you like. But do remember that our strings are going to cover some of this. So it's not really a big deal if it's not perfectly yellow. All right. Now, if you did both sides, then it's a little bit wet. Um, just take something, prop it up let it dry and come back to it okay we can put it actually up here and work on our wings okay and if you just want to do one side of the bead that's fine too i want to be able to carry mine around and play with it i don't have plans of gluing it down on my paper i want to be able to hold it and play with it so i've got it like i just said i did both sides because i'm impatient and i've got a little lid i just propped it up I'm going to set it to the side. Okay, step two. I've got a little piece of white paper. And if you've got an art kit, it probably is more like a square of white paper. Okay. Now, I just want you to draw two little bee wings. However you want them to look, okay? I've got my bee. My bee is about... Oh, I'll bring it back in just to show you. My bee is about this big. I got my towel wipe off my hand. My bee's about this big, so I'm going to say maybe, you know, maybe some little wings about... Ooh, that looks good. So I'll just do like a little wing here. There, I did a little circle. I'm going to make two of those. And I've got one already, so I can make a copy. And look, you know what? I didn't cut that out perfect, did I? And you know what? That's okay. Don't worry. I'm gonna trace around my little wing. You do your best job, okay? It's gonna look great no matter what. Okay? And if you need to pause because you wanna take your time and go slow, then go ahead and do that. I'll be right here. And I'm gonna keep cutting while you do that. Again, my cutting's not perfect, and that's okay. Okay, I've got my two little bee wings. On one side I have the pencil so you can see it. Flip it over. Ta-da! It's all gone. Now I can take my little bee wings when I'm ready and just put them on. But I'm not gonna do it until after I do my strings. Okay, so you finish your bee wings, and I'll be right back to do string with you. Okay, friends, I am back. I have got, hopefully you've got your wings ready. You've got your little bee all painted and dry. Um, mine is not dry, but I'm going to keep going just so I can show you, okay? Um, I don't mind a little paint or a lot of paint on my hands. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take... See these little notches that I had cut earlier? I'm just going to take my little string and I'm going to put one in there. Come on. There we go. And then I'm going to find my other notch down here. See? And that's going to hold it. Now I could zigzag these if I want, but I'm going to try to make, I'm going to match these. This is a good activity for little hands and eyes to practice. I'm going to match this so I can have like stripes. And then I'm going to do, in an art kit I gave you all black, but again, if you have different colors, go ahead. 
This one I'm choosing to do a little bit different. Again, I'm going to find that little notch. I'm going to find my next little notch. I'm going to tuck them in there, and I'm going to wrap it around. And you take your time, okay? Remember, just pause if I'm going too fast. Because if we were in art class, we would definitely be taking longer than Miss Christian is right now. Okay, there's two little stripes. And let's see what could come next. Anything, you're right. But I'm making a pattern, which means I repeat something. So I'm going to do pink, blue. And then I'm going to do pink again. Find it, wrap it around. Find it, wrap it around. Now you can do this with any cardboard and any papers. You can make any little designs. We made ornaments during Christmas like this and we wrapped, wrapped, wrapped with yarn. We love to do that, don't we? And my next color is blue for my pattern because my pattern is pink, blue, pink, blue. So I find my little notch. And I find my little notch. Ooh, that one's a little diagonal, isn't it? But that's okay. I wrap it and wrap it. And it just holds it in place. Do you see how that way? I don't even have to tie it. It's awesome. I need one more. What color, friends? What color, Danica? Pink. That's right. Danny is watching while I do this. Okay, last one. Oops, at least too long. Wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. Oh, what if it's too long and I don't like it that long? What can I do? I can cut it. You're right. Because my notch is holding it, I can just snip it right there. And it still stays, doesn't it? I'm just cutting the ends off because if I cut these, they will all come unwrapped. All right, my little bee. He's all wrapped. What do I need now? I do. I need the wings. I'm going to get my glue. Today, I have some glitter glue. You may have some white glue. You use whatever you have. Remember my trick? I'm going to open it up. I'm going to make sure the white dot is gone not showing so that it's open. Oops. I'm going to give it a little shake so it'll come down. Put a little glue. I want my wings maybe right there. There's one. And now your, your little bee would be dry so you wouldn't be getting yellow paint all over but I don't mind. And I want to make sure to get your project done. I kind of like it. Okay, there he is. And what does he need now? He needs a little face, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. So you can take either leftover white paper and you could cut it out and make like a little face. Or now that yours is dry, you could take a marker and you could mark the face with your, you could dry. Oops, I've lost my marker. Okay, I've grabbed a marker and I've let mine dry a little bit. I'm going to make a little face on here. You could do it however you want. And then remember that little pink paint we had? We could draw a little rosy cheek. Pink. Hmm. There you go, my little bee. And if you want to make a stinger, you could make a little stinger. We have extra paper or paint you could do that with. Okay, I can't wait to see your bee. All right, for our next project, we are going to... Ooh, I moved outside. It's so pretty outside, but it's a little windy. Okay, for our next project, we're going to take our big paper and we're going to take our plain popsicle sticks and our glue and we are going to make the shape of a, of a beehive 
Okay, so we're gonna lay them out. We are not gonna glue yet because this one is a little tricky. You gotta kinda get the shape going on. Does anyone remember what this is called? It is called a beehive, but you remember what the shape is called? It's called a hexagon. Gone. Hexagon means six-sided. So take your time. See, we've got it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? Now you take your time and go ahead and just pause it and try to get yours in this shape. Okay? This is going to be our beehive. Do your best, and I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, now you've got your beehive how you want it. We are going to open our glue. See, he's open. I'm going to shake him down. You probably have white glue. Oh, no! Okay, you ready? You got your shape all done? Let's get our glue out now. Okay, it's open. We're going to shake, shake, shake. And remember, you probably have white school glue, but that's okay. We're going to put our glue on our stick and then put it down where we found it. If you have gold glue, go ahead and use it. But if you don't, don't worry about it. Pick my stick up where it's at, practice putting it glue down the line, and practice putting it right back where I found it. Press. And I'm just putting just enough. Pick it up, down the line, and press. If I put too much glue, it'll be squishing all over the place. Okay, and just keep going down the line. Whoop. <laughs> Pick it up where I found it and put it down right back where I found it. Pick it up. Squeeze. Whoop, come on, glue. Squeeze it and put it back where I found it. You can see mine has even just a little too much glue, doesn't it? But that's okay. You could probably get away with just some dots on there. But it's a good time to practice doing the line, isn't it? Right back where I found it. Squish! Okay, I've got a nice hexagon and I am ready for paint. So let's get our little square of bubble wrap. Um, and let's get our paint colors and a paintbrush, and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, now Danica's gonna help us. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little... Um, bubble wrap. Thank you, Danny. So we're gonna take our bubble wrap, and we've got some paint on a paper, or paper plate. We just need a little bit of paint, and we're gonna squish it in there and make a stamp out of it. And we're going to stamp inside of our beehive the pattern so it's like a honeycomb okay go ahead danny you can use this blue and the purple and you can stamp inside there and we're going to leave you press it all the way down good job you see that and that neat and we're going to leave the outside white because we're going to paint flowers in that next Danny, and you'll want to get all over here so you can get different colors. Good job. Now you can see how Danica right here is doing um, a lot in one area and you're kind of losing the bubble wrap shape. So if she will spread it out a little bit. Um, can we see us, Danny? You will spread it out a little bit, take the paint, and then come over here in the corner. You can get more of the honeycomb. Go ahead, Danny. Doing that blue. Sure. There you go. Good job. Good job. <laughs> nice. Okay, now Danny's taking her bubble wrap and she's gonna I'm get doing the, one. she's gonna do one she says Ooh, it's windy out here so she's getting one little bubble crossing it hard as I can there you go 
I think that looks great. Do Another you, one. Do you want any purple? Sure. Okay, go ahead. There is white, there is a spot. Okay. And then I push it down and got it a big one. I love it. And then I do another one. It's going to be a big one. That okay. One. That looks awesome. And then I do two. Okay, Double. you do two. And friends, while Danica's finishing up hers, you go ahead and finish yours up, and then we'll do flowers next. Okay, friends, Danica has her honeycomb done, and now we're going to take and make the flowers. So she's got over here, she's got all the colors we had. She's got pink and blue and white and red and yellow, but she doesn't have any green. So we're going to take this yellow, and we're going to mix it with what? Pink? No, that would make orange. Water! Yeah, we're gonna, no, we're going to mix yellow with what color to make green, Danica? Blue. That's right. So we'll just mix it right over here, already on our plate from our stamp, and see we're getting a nice green. Now Danny can use this green to make the stems of her flowers. And I can make any shape I want? Yes. Of my flower. I, you know, I used to do this. Right. Okay, well show us. Go ahead. So like she's going to she's gonna paint the stems. I'm going to move this water for her. That's and then okay. next, she'll paint, she's going to do the stems first, because she has green loaded up on her brush. You can get a little water on there, Danica. See how it's looking like a little dry brush? Go ahead and get some water. Just a little. And then we tap our brush. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay, and then mix it back here in the green. That will help give you a little more green. Good job. And if you want any more stems, go ahead. And all these stems are going to be where she's going to put flowers. So when you feel like you're done, then you can put your brush down in the water, rinse it out, and then paint your flowers with your other colors. I made one already. Oh, you're making the leaves. I like that. Do you need any grass? Yes. Grass is green also. That's right. Grass, 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 grass. And we could, to make the grass look different too, we could add in extra green to change and brighten up the color of our green. Or extra yellow, excuse me. So now Danny's mixing extra yellow into that green. And making another one. Yeah, making a different, brighter Good. yellow. Go ahead. And I mix it, mix it, mix it, and it makes a new one. Mm -hmm. You can make grass or leaves with that, whatever you like. Ooh, oh. pretty. I like that. And now, grass, grass. Okay, you good? Yes. You move? Okay, go ahead and rinse your brush. Okay. And it's, oh, we forgot our towel, didn't we? Here you go. You can wipe it on here. I don't care if it's on my shirt. I like this color on my shirt. Okay, so now we're going to use... Here, Dina, I'll trade you brushes. We're going to change it into a little thinner brush. And Danica can paint her flowers on top of the stems. With... I'm going to use first is blue because it's my favorite color. Okay. And I do it a little so I don't ruin it. Okay. I don't want too much water because I don't like too much water. Look, ta-da! Beautiful. And I use, I rinse my brush and then dab it. Uh-huh. And I put some red on. Beautiful. Red, red, red. Oops, I like that color, so I'm going to use red still. So I'm doing another one. Nice. And then I wash my brush again. But I need it to add a little bit so it's so, so watery. Stop, stop. And then some white. First of all, I'm doing the shapes. I'm doing some more white so I could get some punch. Yep. Yeah. 
I've got a little bit of uh, paint here. Over here I've got a dark color and then I picked a lighter color. I'm going to give this to Danica. And I just found something. You can use a toilet paper tube, a lid. Um, oh, this one does? Yes. Yeah, inside her honeycomb she could stamp some circles. Okay. See this? Yeah. That's that. There you so go. I stamp it because... All right, and if I want to add a little bit of pollen, just like our book, I can add, I can either use my bubble wrap and stamp it across here when this is dry, or I could just take a little paintbrush and do some yellow. And just little dabs, like a little bee. Okay, or maybe you want the pollen, the little trail of pollen to go across the flowers. Like that's where he's been. There you go. Okay. I cannot wait to see how yours looks. All right, friends. I want to show you how much contrast we have going on here. Last week we talked about texture, right? That's how the surface of something looks. And here we have a lot of different contrast. We've got darks and lights. And those help us see the different uh, patterns, right? When we put the dark paint down and then we put the light circles on top of it and the bright dots on top of it, we could really see them. They showed up well, didn't they? And then our eye could distinguish that there were different patterns in there. In different shapes. Friends, where on your picture did you use contrast 